Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, I gotta share a, a privacy scare that an online privacy scare what? involving my TikTok account. Thanks to you, my friend. Yeah, I know about it. I was, so, I was acting surprised. I was feigning surprise, they say. But you don't know, I have not told you about my experience. No, no, I'm all about your experience. And I'm gonna be talking to you about something I've learned about my son's musical taste, which I think uh, we both might find fascinating. Yeah, because I actually was talking to him about his, um, about music the other night. The other night. When I was over at your house. Okay. Oh, oh. So, yeah. yeah. Put a pin in that. Can I go first? I need to get this off my chest, man. Oh, yeah, man. please go first. I didn't know what you're signing me up for <laughs> when you tagged me in a TikTok thingy. I don't even know what a, a post. What is a, tic, a TikTok? It, if you put a, a TikTok on TikTok, it's called a TikTok. Is that what it is? You emphasize the I usually the just saw, call it a TikTok, and then usually I call it a TikTok video. Or a TikTok vid if there's young people listening. So like how, just a TikTok vid, sometimes oh, a TTV. Vid. How did this work? Um, you were teasing. Well, I well, uh, I mean, I'm just sim- single, semi-active, semi-active on TT. That's what I call it. Yeah, I yeah. make TTVs every once in a W. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and because I've been talking about the James and the Shame stuff, yes, I, I've been a little little bit more active over there. And because you sang with me on the song. Right. So a lot of people, well, we were doing something that, we were doing a photo shoot for something that, I don't know, you may, fa- you may find out about at some point. It was a, kind of a weird photo shoot that we'll explain in some point in the future. But um, it wasn't Playgirl. <laughs> um <laughs> But we were. At, I wish, man. But we were at this house. I wish I were ready for that. We were at. Yeah, I'm not in. I mean, there was a. They did ask us, "Would you guys like to get in the pool?" And I was like, oh, "I'm not in pool shape. You got to <laughs> give this guy two to three months warning for pool shots." Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need to put one. A, if you, hey, if a you, playgirl shoot on the calendar. If you set, it's, that would be like date. our Marvel movie. Well, let's just let's, baby steps. Pool, pool shoot. Oh, and I'm oh. talking about. Billiards. <laughs> okay, so step one, three months from now, we do a billiard shoot. Mm-hmm. Three months after that, we do an actual liquid Swimming pool. Swimming pool. And then three months after that, Playgirl. That's the that's the pace. That's where we're headed. Okay. And then a year from now, we start our OnlyFans. But it's the, the, the two of us together. Oh, I already have one. Oh, why are you even telling me about it? Well, it's the same thing about my TikTok. I don't, you know, nobody knows about it. So anyway, until you start talking about it publicly. We were at this house. Uh, it wasn't my house. Everyone was like, oh, now we know you got a secret room. Anyway, it was a dumb little thing that was featuring the song that you sang on uh, where, you know, I opened up a secret door to a bar and you stumbled out. And it was like, surprise, Link singing on my people song. People thought that was your house. Let me just say. It's not your house. People were really happy to see that. It's got over a million views. You know, I, that's all it takes, Link, is just for your best friend to stumble out of a bar to get a million views on TT. Yeah, you see, um, she, she, you know? But you see what, I tagged you. See what happens when you include me in your solo project. I, well, hey, okay, well, let me, <laughs> let me, uh, you can go look at the other views uh, on the other videos as well. Uh, you, I have, I have. So um, there was also, uh, I, I had to actually ask you in person while we were there, is this your TikTok, like, Link Neil 1? <laughs> Right. A, and then, like, the actual. I joined like, too late to get Link Neal. And then it was like, AK, uh, Link Neal, AKA Snuggle Baby, is like, which is what you actually call yourself. Elk Count Snuggle Baby. What did I say? Uh, you just left out the Elk Count part. Elk Count yeah. Snuggle Baby. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you were like, yeah, that's me. And no posts. No posts. At the time. I think you had like under 2,000 followers at the time. So uh, I have uh, I think I, I think I had 800 followers. Oh really? Yeah, I had under a thousand. Under a thousand. So I don't know what you're at. at and when we're recording this, you're like closing in on ten thousand. But I'm I sure it's going to go it. up. I have eight thousand followers now. So you 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 ten xed me. Well, it's still happening. It's still going. And now we're talking about it. Now people know you got a TikTok. But Link Neil, not the number one. I was apparently if you want to follow nothing. I was looking at 
uh, I don't actually, change. I don't know if it was the comments or if it was a tweet. I can't remember. Someone said, Brett put links TikTok on blast. And, and nobody knew it existed. And unless you links, really were digging, links, favorites, links, likes, liked videos are public. And so I get a text. So I texted you. At 9 36 at night, which is pretty much guaranteed that I'm not going to get that text usually. I was so surprised that you responded because I was like, see six minutes into Shut Eye right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which is the name of our next song. <laughs> Six minutes into shutdown. Shut eye. Shut, shut down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is a full <laughs> shutdown. <laughs> Let's be clear. It is a shutdown. I do have a gift, you know. Uh, it's not that I'm not an anxious person, but it does not affect my ability to fall asleep or stay asleep. And I'm so grateful for that. So, yeah, I'm in bed getting in there a little bit later, snuggling up in my sheets. And... I guess because I had my phone open, I just, the text came through. Oh, I caught you while you were grazing. Well, I think I was, um, I was making sure that my alarm was set to the right time okay. or something. Okay, all right. You know, because I really try not to look at stuff right before I go it's to sleep. A, it's a bad habit. Because they say not to do that. They say. I don't like to, I don't like to plant thoughts in my head. I just like, you know, I like to purge all thoughts. You can plant good thoughts in your head right before you go to bed. But. There's apps for that. You, There's all videos you can listen to on YouTube where it's like sleep talk, and it's people talking you to sleep. Boring stuff? That's a good idea. Well, it's kind of what we did for the society. When Let's, we did, dream when we did. Let's dream about that. Let's dream about that. So, yeah, you send me this text. And it's like people are saying that your TikTok likes are public. And I just immediately had this physical reaction. You know, when, like, the blood, like, drains out of your body. Well, what did you have to be ashamed of? And Well, I'm just telling you what the physical response, not the logical response. First, it was physical. The, body, the, the blood drained out of my body, which feels weird when you're lying down. Um, because what does it do? Go out the butthole? Like, what's the lowest point of a lying down length? I don't think the blood think leaves the, the body. I think, I think the lowest point of my prone body is the butt cheeks. So, I mean, you get, you get some swollen butt cheeks like a baboon in heat, but I that's think, about all. I think my... Butt cheeks were engorged with blood. Yep. As a result. Did you turn over and show your wife? Of your. <laughs> hey, baby. Feel how hot my butt is. My butt is engorged right now. <laughs> is yours. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was just like this, like, immediate, just like, jump to embarrassment. But you haven't been looking at any dancing ladies or anything. And then, uh, well, yeah. Or like, did, you haven't been here, liking them. Here's what it feels. Here's what it felt like. This is what I liken okay. it to. It's All like right. if you're walking around a room, like let's say you're you're entering a room and you're doing some sort of chores and stuff and you're going about business and you've been in there for, I don't know, if it's 10 minutes or an hour. Okay. And then all of a sudden somebody speaks and you realize, oh, uh, somebody's been in the room the whole time. Oh, I didn't see him. I cleaned right around you know, him. You know what that feels like? It's just like immediately... You're running everything through your head, or like, oh, what have I been saying? If if you join a like a a video chat, like a Zoom meeting, oh yeah, or a Google Meet, right. on your computer, and then nobody's in the meeting yet, so then you open another tab and you start. Well, I might as well like browse or do something. You go and on then, TikTok and start liking incriminating videos, right? You do stuff like that, and then all of a sudden you forget that you have an open webcam and video chat going when people start joining the meeting and then you're like it's just you have this feeling of like being exposed it's like when you realize that you've been watched and you don't know it it right. kind of feels like oh my god what? it's not that you necessarily remember doing anything compromising it's just i were, probably was you were dancing like no one was watching exactly and so i was like you know just scrambling, <laughs> scrambling to get on TikTok and like, I didn't even look at what my favorites were. Oh, I did. <laughs> well, I, I want that's to. That's the first thing I did. That's the exercise that I want to do. Well, that's the first thing I did before I called you. Oh, really? Before I texted you. No, no. no. <laughs> I texted I'm you like, and then immediately went and looked at your life. I'm scrambling. <laughs> I'm scrambling like, oh, God, how do you, privacy settings? Because when I signed up for TikTok, it's just like everything else you sign up for. It's, okay. I'm just, I'm not planning on doing anything here. Right. Just and in case. And 
if you really got to go all the way through all those settings. Just staking your claim. It's like buying one, like a square foot of the moon. You know, that, that was going around for yeah, a while. Yeah, it's just, it's just like a little trend. Buying a, naming a star after yourself. You do it just in case. Right. Just in case. Just in case we but, do populate the moon. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I have a certificate that says I own a square foot of this. But what you so don't do. You're not building do, this mall moon, moon mall on my land. Exactly. But what you don't do is you don't go into the settings on your moon's, what's it called when you have a section of land? Tract. Your Tract. moon tract. Moon tract. You don't go deep into the settings and you're like, oh, I don't want anybody to see where I step around on my tract. It's like, who cares? It's yeah. just going to be footprints. And you can pretty much just spin on one square foot. You don't really way. think about it. Um, so I, I changed my privacy settings. And then you started looking at and what then people I was like, might have seen. Let's see what people have seen. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 rows of three. So, uh, 69. Six, is that 69? 20, oh, 20, 63. I, I wish it was 69. 63. I have favorited 69 things. That's the first, <laughs> uh, just scandalous thing. And then I'm like, oh crap, I got to. I gotta look through all of this. So I'd like to look through this right now, and you tell me, I, I have candidates for what could be the most incriminating stuff. Okay, well, I, I, only, I saw one thing that I, drew, I, I formed an opinion about. I'll, I can, yeah. I can, I can. I know what you're talking about. I can now, withhold it. Now, first of all. But I'm also guilty of it. The first, really? The first, if I go all the way back to the beginning, the first thing I ever favorited on TikTok is a 30 million view video of Lizzo. And of course, this was, this was pre whatever she's going through that I don't even know about. Mm -hmm. I just, I have an inkling that something happened with Lizzo and I don't want to know about it. Okay. But yeah, wow. I, at one point I favorited a Lizzo tweet. To, uh, TT. TT, all right? Leave me out of it. Whatever, whatever it is or was or will be, leave me out of it. Yep. And then a few more. Uh, there's, a, there's an overhead view of a, a Nutella jar. And I'm like, oh, no, this could be sexual. Well, from here people, it looks People like, sending me pictures of overhead views of peanut butter jars all the time. It looks like a vagina from here. <laughs> I know, but then I clicked on it, and it's just like when you get to the end of a Nutella jar, you you fill it up and shake it up and then you've got like a nice, a nice little milk, Nutella milk. Oh, okay. So I was like, Whew. all right, that's fine. And then, um, but I think it has seventy million views because it sort of looks like a vagina. No, it has seventy thousand views. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we yeah, don't it's care just, anymore. Is your jar of Nutella almost empty? Well, you brew your coffee into oh, yeah, it because you got to melt it. And then you put you you steam your cream and you put that in it and you got a Nutella jar latte. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna save this because I might never do that, and I never did. Well, you know why you didn't do it? Because you gotta have collections. Okay. You gotta save to collections. I don't know that. That's where you Save yeah, a video instead so of just liking instead it. Instead of liking it. So you would save that to either categories could include ones that look like vaginas or cool Nutella hacks okay. or maybe just food. I would probably put that in just food. A lot. one I have. A lot of mine are hip-hop culture-related stuff that I don't even need to get, like producers, like footage of the first time that Timbaland played a beat for Jay-Z and it was caught on camera or uh, stuff like that. Or Frank Zappa talking about his guitar style. Mm -hmm. Or Bernard Purdy talking about his drumming technique. Okay. And maybe Trevor Noah talking about why he decided to leave The Daily Show. And then of course, I thought I would have m many more of these, but like middle-aged men showing you how to stretch stuff. I have a whole category of that. I need to make a category of that. Yeah, I just I've, call it body. Body. And, body. And then I start. My body. The, the first thing that I started to get embarrassed by was 
I would favorite or like videos featuring me. Yep, saw that. That's what um, I saw. So that's what I noticed. Just little little moments from this show. That's what I noted. That I found. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like the story of me crying on my wife's shoulder. I was like, you know what? I want to be a fan of myself for that. Well, hold on. Is that really why you like it? Because I'm gu- I'm guilty of this as well. If I don't. Look at my I honestly likes, don't know why I liked it. I occasionally. Well, I actually I have a habit if not an obligatory compulsion, to when something from the Mythical account or the Mythical Pods account mm-hmm. pops Comes up across. on my FYP, yeah, I just like it. Because I'm like, hey, I'm, this is, you know, this support, is our- Support your own this cause. This is our business. Yeah. Burp, burp, it's, not, burp, burp. it's not like voting for yourself in like a, a you know, the, this, the class election. Right. That, that's tacky. And occasionally, I'll like one of my own videos if I feel like, it needs a boost. So it's not a judgment of my own video. Like, oh, I do like this video. It's more like maybe liking this video will help it do better. That's not why I did it. I did it because um, I felt like that was a special moment and I wanted to, I, I really liked it. I actually liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I sometimes I watch some of the stuff we do and I'm like, well, damn, if I wasn't me, I'd still like those guys. And so then you like it? Yeah, I felt, I mean, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Uh, there's some uh, some Merle Haggard clips in here. I liked um, a clip of Winona Judd telling everybody she's okay. Mm-hmm. I really liked that. Yeah. Um, I was like, wow, I'm glad I liked this 100-year-old Appalachian woman just talking. Well, she's 87, but but her voice is amazing. It's great. Yeah. I- now you got a microwave to heat your water in. Just set a cup in there. Put a teaspoon full of Jello. I like me. I just love that voice. I like that. She reminded me of my nanny. If my nanny was like real saucy, <laughs> so I had to like that. I wasn't embarrassed at all about that. Um, and then let's see. I'm gonna save the thing I was most embarrassed by. I was like. Oh, this is kind of embarrassing. I got this like anim this trippy Alice in Wonderland animation thing that like just like totally freaks you out when you look at it. And like I was like, man, this is cool. Why'd you be embarrassed by that? I don't know. It was just like it's just like, what are you? Some sort of some sort of hippie dude just staring at your phone? Well, here's the thing. You avoided I, I was searching for what I was going to be. You avoided the most obvious embarrassing oh, thing. Oh, I'm, I'm coming back to the most embarrassing thing. Well, no, I'm saying, I think the most incriminating thing would have been is if you had a hot lady. Right. You know. Right. You know, like a shaking hot, her money maker. Right. Like, um, oh, the, the you know? most beautiful women from hip hop videos, if I was going to stay in the genre. And then I could defend it. It's like, oh, yeah, I have none of that. So yeah, I started to feel good, but then I had this one did you see this one? I didn't spend a whole lot of time. This is the one that I was like, oh, is this the one that's gonna get me? It's, I don't know, it's these. What in the world? It's this hippie couple. Why did you like this? That's, um, I mean, it says that she's a yoga teacher, but it's a. It's this guy with his shirt off. This feels like that love, sh- That what is that love spasm video that <laughs> went viral? On Goop? The goop video? Well, it was a TikTok, and it was like a girl who was like, he's having a love fit or something, and she like hugs him and shakes him, and it's oh, like yeah. the cringiest thing I've it's ever seen. It's very cringy. Life. This feels like you're in that territory, man. The girl, the yoga girl is wearing, um, she's wearing a toga type thing, like a cheetah toga, and the guy's just wearing shorts, and there's... It's a pretty wide shot, though. It's a wide shot, and it's, I don't know who these people are, but it's called Intimate Reconnection, and it just goes through all of these things that they're basically cuddling and tickling and talking to each other. And I'm <laughs> Were you trying to get, like, tips? Well, I was afraid that it just seemed like I was just gawking at this couple who were just, like, cuddling and tickling and, well, that's what and it seems like giggling with each other. Uh, but, yeah, it, and it goes through steps of diff- different things for intimate reconnection. One, non-sexual melting hug. 
Two, synchronized circular breathing. But they're like, I mean, they're scantily clad and they're just like, so they're, when you, they're doing something that I wouldn't film and do, put on TikTok. But do you remember when you like this, the the reason was, oh, this is this is sweet, or yeah, I need to remember this so I can number three do these one, things with Christy. One minute appreciation game. So you really watched this video? Well, I'm, so it's, I'm just, it's quite a long video. I'm telling you now what what's in it. Number four, make each other laugh. Number five, discuss feeling using active listening. So it's basically just a video of these people like. Connecting intimately, but non-sexually. But just a casual user would be like, oh, you're a peeping Tom on these hippies having a sexual connection, having a little, um, you know, foreplay. I don't think watching a TikTok video can make you a peeping Tom because you're watching something that someone put on the internet yeah, to but, be watched. Yeah, but when you're looking if through you this were, stuff and you you're like- you went to this person's what, house and what are people in their window- I know. That would be a different thing. I know, and we've never done that. No, no, especially not in eighth grade with your girlfriend. Well, I don't. It was your idea, though. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I feel really bad about it because my wife, Christy, you know her. She had a peeping tom back in high school. Well, high school. If you, I'm just saying, middle school is the cutoff. If you should, you can't, you should never do it. But if you, if uh, I'm right. saying, we were in middle school as like a person going through like crazy hormones and, and like you, you don't know what's going on. You don't know which ways up. I'm not. I am not defending. I'm it. not defending it. But I'm saying that if it becomes an adult activity, then that's like a mental problem. Is what I'm saying. That's like a crime. <laughs> but I'm saying like two 13 year olds looking in a window. Well, and we were a long ways away. Oh yeah, we were. We were behind a wood pile. We were behind a wood pile. It was on the other side of the yard. We didn't go into the yard. We didn't stand outside the window. And we, then her we bedroom, were 80 yards away. Her bedroom was on the second floor. We could not have thrown a football at this woman. And hit and hit the window. No, not even close. And if the window it was open. It landed halfway like at the swing set. And we didn't see. We Nothing. Didn't, we, she folded some clothes. She folded some clothes. She was folding clothes. She was folding clothes. That's all that happened. The, the most enticing part was like, ooh, is that... Underwear she's folding? Is she folding underwear? That was the discussion that was happening. It wasn't right. It, it was, was wrong. It was very it was wrong. wrong. We condemn we are, it on every possible We level. condemn it on every level but we from every 13. angle. Help us out, Jenna. Um, no. <laughs> Come on, Jenna. <laughs> I, I don't see. I think it... It's fine. <laughs> it's fine that we move on. It's, it's what you're saying. We, let's just move on. Let's just move on. I'm sorry I brought it up. I mean, I thought I thought you that were young, you were teenagers. It's fine. We were, <laughs> yeah. We were barely in eighth grade. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, I thought what was gonna incriminate us was gonna be me watching hippies cuddle on TikTok. Okay, what else? This is it, man. This is the thing that scared me the most. But yeah, the reason why I saved it is because oh I wanna I wanna do this. Okay, well, but and this is a good reminder to do this. Long story short, uh, you didn't have anything to really be uh, in, incriminated. And you by. found that out at the same time. Like, we I were both I, simultaneously I looking at my favorites. No, I, I didn't scroll. I looked and I was like, oh, oh, there's a, he liked a video of himself. He'll figure it out. That's kind of what I said. And I just, and I went on to. I liked a couple the videos of the myself. Things. The other one I liked was my dad singing Happy Birthday to me on Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. Well, that's a sweet thing to like. Because now, now I have that. You, you know? Can remember it forever. Right. You can put it into a collection of the times that people sing Happy Birthday to you as well. Yeah. And right I have it. To a, to a little focused. Yeah. I have it right next to a video from Murda on the Beats talking about his come up. Such a strange. Well, I'm going to talk to you about world. music, but I was uh, so relieved from a different perspective in a little bit. I have something else to share with you, but first, you got nothing on me. We want to remind you that you can't uh, catch me with my pants down. I wasn't done. You can't catch me with my pants down. Yeah, we're 25 minutes in. I don't. He's not done because I don't look at TikTok with my pants down. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to let it burn out. It's like it's like a candle. I have nothing to hide. It's like one of those candles. Sometimes it's like Link is like those trick birthday candles <laughs> that you keep trying to blow out. It's cuz my brain works slow. <laughs> so what I was about to say was uh you might know that Link and Cotton Candy Randy have a uh, they don't get along. Fraught. I, I do get along with Cotton Candy Randy and we've tried a number of forms of you know, working this out. We met with the therapist. 
that didn't work. And now it has moved to meeting with an actual legal mediator before it goes to a, you know an actual court case, maybe. <laughs> right. And uh, so we had that mediation event with a real real life mediator. Mm-hmm. And uh, things got a little bit wild. Again, this is exclusively on the Mythical Society. That's where we handle our problems with Randy. It's available right. for first, second, and third degree. Mythicalsociety.com. Um, and also, we want to remind you that if you enjoy this podcast, or even if you don't, uh, well, no, if rate, you do, review it, it, rate and review it wherever you rate and review podcasts. Give us a glowing review. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. I took three years of French in high school. And? I can say, we. Oui. <laughs> to that, you can say yes to that. And uh, I think because it was school, yeah. I wasn't motivated, I slept through most of it. Somehow I still made A's all three years. Good job. But I didn't learn it. it bon, I, I wasn't doing bon something job. right. <laughs> In comes Rosetta Stone the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app that truly immerses you in the language you wanna learn, no grades involved. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, some of which are Spanish, French, Italian, Korean, Japanese, Dutch, and Arabic. And it's built for fast language acquisition. By immersing you in many ways by having no English translation, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Probably the best part is Rosetta Stone's built-in true accent feature that gives you feedback on your pronunciation so you can learn to speak like a pro. It's an amazing value. A lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all trips or language needs in your life. It's a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $179. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. Uh, before we get into what I learned about my son's musical taste, I would like to um, share a piece of information that I learned. Uh, there is a thrift store in Wales that has asked people to stop donating, quote, used and unused sex toys. <laughs> a charity run <clears throat> thrift store, this is from U- really? UPI.com. A charity-run thrift store in Wales is asking supporters to stop donating their used and unused sex toys. Uh, The Barnados, or Bernardo's store, which supports the, okay, children's charity, issued a statement asking donors to be careful what they bring to share. Could those of you who kindly donate please be mindful that we are a children's charity, and as such, we have a range of ages on our wonderful volunteer team. So there's kids receiving the things that are... Uh, given, we therefore ask that you refrain from donating your used and unused marital aids. Oh, cool. We would like to remind you that marital the, aids. That the branch has CCTV so that these items can be tracked back to their owners. Thank you. Uh, this is there's layers to this. Yeah, may I before we before we get into the specifics of what's happening here, I'd like to ask what what's the what's the first time you saw a sex toy? Because apparently. This is the answer for a lot of children working in Wales. Was, in person? Yeah. Well, first time I saw a sex toy in person was when I was working at a thrift shop. In Wales. In Wales. The first time in person, I mean, honestly, it was probably after I was married. When I bought one. When I know when that was because I was there. The, when we bought the, we each bought a green worm. Yeah, I don't think that's the actual title, but that's just what we called it. Yeah, that's the first time I saw a sex toy in person. Was uh, it was me and Rhett in a sex shop buying what we called green worms. The same vibrator. Hey, two different vibrators. Right, but, but also right around the same time, we bought the same television. When we first got married, right, we did research. One guy does research on something. The other guy's like, what TV are you getting? It's like, I did the research, get this why, TV. Why would I get a different television? Yeah, you know, what jam box are you getting to play tunes in your bedroom? Right. Why would this I get one? a different jam box? 
And it's like he's done all the work. We went to the store and we sort of collectively did research and we selected a small <laughs> green <laughs> worm vibrator. And our wives were, we were in Charleston, South Carolina. We talked about this on Sex Timber, right? Oh. I, you know, the girls were coming into town to meet us because we were like traveling and yeah. we thought it would be a, a funny, we, we thought it'd be a fun surprise yeah, with a little bit of funny. Yeah, a little shrimp and grits, they say. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying something. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Hey, you, I don't want the word grit involved. <laughs> it's like the opposite of lube. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll work on that. Shrimp and lube, maybe. Uh, ew. For you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Not for me. You don't use lube? I don't have a sh what I would call a shrimp. Oh, okay. Well, speaking of that. <laughs> I don't use uh, <laughs> My My goal in buying it, I don't know if I told you this, is I, I felt like. You kind of look like a dragon tail. I felt like the green. Like the kids show. I feel like the rules for the first vibrator you ever buy for you and your wife is, A, it should be smaller than your own penis. B, it should not be the same color as your own penis. No. Because, I mean, hey, let's mix things up a little bit. Right. Therefore, green. It could and have I, been an alien's dick for I'm all talking neon green. Yeah, yeah, it was so bright. I mean... It may have been glowing in the dark. I don't know if I ever tested that. I, I like the lights on. I think I did, yeah, and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that buddy lasted a long time. I don't know where it is. I guess it's at a thrift store somewhere. <laughs> in Wales. <laughs> because yeah. I don't have it anymore. They're both... And I definitely donated it. Plopped on a shelf in <laughs> Wales. It's in... No, I, here's the thing. I think that this is... I think this thrift shop has great intentions. I think they're seeing this all wrong. I thought that they were going to focus on the immediate, like the obvious issue, which is like a sanitary one. Hygiene. If something's been inside your body, it doesn't need to potentially go inside somebody else's body. However, mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that you you might buy utensils from a... Thrift shop. Thrift shop, and yeah. those have been in people's bodies. Right. You might buy a mug. How, right. how many mugs? Those mugs have been inside people's bodies. Yes, it's the other end, but it's inside their body, their yeah. mouth. This mug goes into my mouth. Well, just, the, just the rim of it. That's the part just that goes in your mouth if you drink out of it. Yeah, that's true. What about a rectal thermometer? Well, Would now we're back to the other end. a rectal thermometer at a thrift shop? Is it because we are worried about like STDs or something. I mean, these things can be washed very, very well. They can be yeah, completely but you don't, sanitized. You don't want the volunteer children to be doing so, that. So, again, so uh, <laughs> that's what I thought they were going to be talking about was the sanitation, right. but they're talking about the fact that the right. kids are receiving these, and they and then it probably yeah. creates difficult conversations. Don't say the kids are receiving these, uh, the, by the way. Okay, the kids are seeing them and potentially... Handling. Handling them. Preparing. Uh, but I just think there's so many other ways to just describe sex toys in ways that could be fun, you, you know? Like, you don't have oh. to think of it as, think of all the things you could have done with that green worm. Okay. Um, you got a you, you got a, a, a thing that buzzes that hard, multiple I, speeds? I think it could be a- Looks like a dragon tail? It could be a, um, a, a, a coffee frother. Maybe, maybe, it maybe, could, maybe. It could be a, a itchy ear fixer. Well, the one of the uh -huh, I'm not done. Okay. It could it could be uh um I, I guess I was done. One of the most famous <laughs> vibrators of all time is that Hitachi. You know the Hitachi. It's big. It's who's clearing their throat over there? <laughs> it's like we said Hitachi and Jamie said <laughs> <coughs> I actually know the um CEO of that company. Oh it, really? Yeah. So if you guys ever need any. Well, I've been through a few. Uh, the first one we ever got was we had to plug that sucker in the wall. You can hang it off the back of a boat I mean, and just scoop right across the lake. When you've got to plug a vibrator into the wall, <laughs> I mean, that is a serious thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, got, you got to get your extension cord game going. And I will say, by the time we had upgraded to the Hitachi. What a weird flex, by we, the way. We had, I know the CEO of I know, that is Hitachi weird. <laughs> Vibrators. You know the CEO of it's, all of Hitachi? Not Hitachi, because Hitachi had sold it to Vibratex. Old Sky, okay. Oh, Old Sky. Yes. You know about the, the the dealings of these yeah, companies. Yeah, yeah. Well, Part of the well, business. You know, we'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> yes. Jamie comes from a, you know, 
Oh, she worked on a sex podcast. For years. Yeah, I yeah. went to a lot of like right. shows. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't know, it wasn't the top of your resume, but you buried the lead. You was know? it not the top of my resume? I, I didn't actually look at I you. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> as a Kinko hired me. It probably was the top of your resume. Well, by the time I got the one that plugged into the wall, I had Kiko hired you? Kiko was like, oh, they'll love this. <laughs> this is, uh, I just, I don't know. Well, I mean, we're talking. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah but, yeah, but but like what ends up happening typically is like the conversation stops and then I begin to talk again. And then you begin to talk in the middle of me beginning to talk. It's cool if you still got something to say, but it would be nice to just let me finish what I'm going to say and then get back to it in a gap. Like there's well, a, I have something to say. There's like yeah, but that is what we were just talking right, about. But like and just usually because, the time to say that you is need to in the, just is slow in, your brain down a little is bit. Is in the man. gap between what down. other people are saying. Like that's most people are like listening to what other people are saying, and then there's a gap, and they're like, oh, that's where I get in. I get in in the gap. Weird flex. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll keep trying, but we need to meet in the middle. Yeah, meet in the middle of the gap between the things that I'm saying. Like well, right my, here. Then so you move on. Here's this thing I'm saying, here's the thing I'm saying, and then there's a gap, and that's where you get in. And then I do the same to you. And it's a beautiful arrangement. It's called conversation. It works great on a podcast. <laughs> By the time we had upgraded to something that you plug in the wall, I had fully embraced a vibrator that was significantly larger than my own penis. That was all I was trying to say. And by getting at this point, now the third time trying to say it, I, it listen, doesn't land quite listen, as well. I'm sorry. I know you I know it it rubs you the wrong way. I'm I'll try I'll try I'll try harder. You think I should enjoy it? Is that what you're saying? I should learn to like it? No, I get it. I'm not are doing we, it on purpose. Are we are we done with this story? Or is there more is there more to explore here? Yeah, I I've totally broke your spirit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> No, I'm. I'm just saying. I, I. I think that was it. I don't think there's anything else to explore here. I'm open to anything that you want. Oh, to explore. oh, that's what. Oh, that's what you're doing. Oh, uh, well, let me think about it. Hmm. It would probably help if you started talking about the next thing. Yeah, right. That's what yes. it really does. That gives me a sense of urgency. It seems to. Because it it's seems like, to oh, really we're, turn you on. Oh, we're done. Ah, oh, shit! I have one more thing. Right. Yep. Yep. I don't. You're not okay. Okay, so. I want back to music. I wanted to talk about something that I have, and it's good that you that you talk to Shepard individually, um, because you know Shepard's got great musical taste. Mm -hmm. Even as a as a young kid, I very quickly picked up on the fact that he wasn't really interested in um, musical trends. He wasn't really interested in what his peers liked. When I found out that he liked bread, I was, you know, and he's like in middle school, I'm like, okay, yes. And I think I told you about the playlist that he had called Cool Songs, mm -hmm. which he started when he was like nine and added to it. And it became like a soundtrack for our home in a lot of ways because he's he's a great cool DJ. Songs. He just, he knows what he just knows good songs like you introduce him to a genre and he immediately gravitates towards the good choices in that genre so like when i introduced him to old country right he gravitated towards glenn campbell you right know what i'm saying which is like which is strangely a, specific right but, but pretty awesome but kind of signals that you really like a, glenn campbell is kind of operating on another level and i and i wasn't like offended that he didn't like really um you know, latch on to Merle. It's not he has he has a number of Merle songs in his cool songs list. But I appreciated that he wasn't just, oh, I just like these songs because my dad likes them. He's right. like, I have actually examined this genre and come to this specific conclusion that Glenn Campbell is special. Well, it's the thing that doesn't happen as readily now. I don't feel like that. Um, you know, with popular music. You just kind of get on the bandwagon and, you know, listening to what you're, well, there's all these music in our house, but like growing up, the music that that we listened to was, it was a lot less of it. And the, of course, the accessibility was much more limited, but we found ourselves going back. Like we liked our parents' music. The I mean, with your parents, it like went all the way back to like Frankie Valley. 
like um yeah, because doo wop type like stuff. T- like ten years older than but your you, parents. You had an appreciation for that and like the Elvis. beach the Beach Boys and Elvis. And uh, but then you would also have an appreciation for Billy Joel, which was still preceded us. The the stuff that we liked the most. But the thing that we did not do that Shepard is doing now, which is first of all, I'm happy that this is happening because the idea that my kid's musical taste is like too overly influenced by my taste is like I, not an appealing thing to me. Like I like I I would be a little bit kind of like hurt, to be honest, if like they didn't like any of the stuff that I liked. But if my kid's musical taste is in complete alignment with me, then the whole That's like strange. individuation process hasn't happened, right? It's like. And so I've kind of been yeah. expecting there to be some sort of, um, you know, a, a branching test of uh, taste of rebellion, to you know, to actively. I think it's important for teenagers to actively like things that their parents actively dislike. I just feel like that's a really important individuation developmental you thing. You know what I mean? And music is a is a a safer place to do that. We actually talked about this some on Car Biscuits, which if you don't know, on the Mythical Society, we drive in the car and we have like a mini version of this type of conversation, but it's like much less structured, and I never interrupt you. Um, That's right. It's um, beautiful over there. Well, what's, what was my point? Um, yeah, that, this concept of like controlled like a safe area for not only individuation, but like simulated rebellion. You know, like we we listened to gangster rap that we didn't want our parents to know about. And were we exposed to things that like otherwise we would never have learned and um, some things that uh, particularly misogynistic um, concepts that we, we never latched onto, but we were like, it was like, oh, this is, this is this. We shouldn't be listening to this. And it's actually. I, I was listening to this. Uh, psych- there was a healthy part of it. A psychologist talk about this concept, and I think he said, "It is perfectly." And this will make you feel good, parents. Uh, it is perfectly normal from the ages of thirteen to twenty-four. I think he said, for your children to think you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, to to just think that you're an idiot, and it's. He was expl- I'm going to I'm paraphrasing and probably getting some of this wrong but the idea seemed to be that historically this was a time for children to sort of learn like who you can trust and uh to and also to forcibly be, kind of be pushed out to go and start their own thing you know we're talking like hunter gatherer days okay uh, because these communities could only get so big, you know, like 150 or so, and, and they ne- needed to start a new one. So there's the- like my cave dad is a dumbass. And basically, it's like you go through puberty, and one of the things that ends up happening is you hate your parents. Now, I'm not saying my kids hate me. I'm just saying that like your club work is stupid, dad. There's this idea of like I'm not going to like everything that they say. I'm not going to like everything they do. I'm not going to like everything they like. The pelts you like are stupid. But then when you get back to uh, age of 24, approximately, is when you kind of are like, oh, uh, my parents were actually, uh, they actually knew what they were talking about. I appreciate them. So if you're waiting now that for I your need kid, to move back in with them, <laughs> yeah, right. So if you're waiting for your kid to express appreciation, apparently it doesn't happen until on average about 24. But back to Shepard. So he's got a group of friends and they play music together. And like a band or they listen to music? They, like a band. And so. And he plays keyboards? He plays guitar. So so Shepard plays piano, violin, and guitar. Oh. But in this band, he plays guitar. Okay. And they're not really a band. They don't have a show yet. They don't have any original songs or anything like that. They're just like guys that get together when they can all get together in a garage and play music. And I'm sure it's great. But the thing that they really do is they talk about music and they connect over music. And there's this that's cool. 
sort of method in philosophy that is sort of, it's unspoken because to speak about it is inherently uncool. So I started hearing Shepard talk about his musical taste and like some of the stuff that they were into. And so I was like, Shepard, you've got to talk to me through this. You've got to talk me through the way that you guys approach this because A, it's fascinating and B, I want to talk about it on my podcast. <laughs> and uh, so, and, and he was like, well, you can't talk about specifics because that kind of ruins the whole thing which is exactly the point I'm about to explore. And that is, they have this thing where this group of friends will, quote, put you on to a band. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the term that they use. Yeah. I'm going to put you on to this band, and, and there is essentially, like, clout in finding a band that nobody else in the group knows about that everyone else in the group likes. Though that's the Venn diagram. Yeah. That's totally. when you have succeeded. Totally. So you can't put somebody onto a band that everyone knows about. You can't put someone onto a band that is super popular. Mm -mm. And so I was like, so how many, like, just to put things in the terms of Spotify monthly listeners. Mm -hmm. And so he starts showing me some of these bands, and we're talking like, 3,200 monthly listeners. I mean, these are small, these are small bands. And some of them are like, People making music. I was like, when did this album come out? He's like, 2006. It's like, it's not. It's, really? Yeah. And it's, and so I'm like, what are these? And it's, and it's, it's all kind of like, I would say broadly emo. Ooh, that didn't work. Well, when I say emo, it but didn't like succeed. emo goes into like metal, but it also goes into more like clean guitar, but like <laughs> screamo is kind of a form of emo. You know, it's like, these are very emotional. It's all very emotional. So like this guy's screaming at the top of his lungs, but what he's saying is like, really like, you know, like, it's well, emotional. I, you know, I burnt my hand on a, my tea kettle. I don't. Uh, it's more just about like, uh, I mean, some, I, he showed me, Again, I'm not gonna. I can't. I can't point it out. I can't put it on blast. I can't ruin it. I mean, look, this is this is ear biscuits. I mean, what, you can't like, say you can't. I can direct, say some genres. You can't direct people to an uh, artist because then it will get more streams. I can't ruin it. I have to. It has. It has to be small but good. But and, you've uh, listened to it. I got him to. And in your opinion, oh, I hate it. It's bad. Oh yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I actively hate it. But I but loved that I hated it. Can Do you know you, what I'm saying? Okay, I was like, yeah. there he is. He's he, he's actively listening to something that is objectively bad. But let me ask, okay. This makes me feel like was a good it dad. Was it amateur or was it just a genre that you did not like? Because you also you, you also have the capability of saying- I can appreciate this. Things. There's there's skill here in execution, and there, Great it's question. not for me. So does it suck or is it just not for you? Well, first of all, most bands that have been playing for a while that are still kind of hovering around 10,000 or less monthly listeners, like, there's it, a reason for it. Didn't it. it doesn't have a mass appeal, right? And a lot of times that does mean, yes, it's not that great from a technical standpoint. He plays some stuff, and I'm like, there's a lot of, in fact, it was so, I, was, I, I, I find myself dadding real hard a lot of times, but he plays this thing, and I, and I found myself, I think I told you this on Car Biscuits, he plays it, and I was like, you can hear the imperfections in this. Like, you can hear the, all the mistakes in this, right? <laughs> like, just making sure, like, as a musician, you can hear all the mistakes. <laughs> like, the timing mistakes and the missed okay. notes. And he's like, yeah, Dad, that's part of it. So they're oh. not playing to a metronome a lot of these bands. In fact, it's very. it sounds like you're describing a demo. Well, yes, it all sounds very demo. And just a few genres to throw out there. Of course, screamo, but scrams? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, as a DJ, you might be ready for. You need to be ready for this. Yeah, this is crust. Not... Crust. What's what is? I don't. I mean, do know. you have a description for these? He, I, he's fifteen. I, he couldn't really give me one. He would play. Oh, you're not reading a list here. This I, is no, what he told. Sc you. Scrams and crust are the things I remember. And uh, he Scram. would play some things, and it was like it all sounds pretty similar to me. It kind of some moves a little bit more heavy metal like oh this is this is metal there's a double kick happening here there might be some screaming 
And then you kind of move into this thing where it's, somebody's a little bit more like this. <laughs> and it's like okay. clean guitar and stuff. <laughs> oh, I stub my tongue. Did what, what, did you say English? Uh, yeah, I said the same thing that you said about stubbing the toe. Oh, oh I stubbed my toe. <laughs> oh, I stubbed my toe. I said I burnt my hand. Oh, a, I burned my hand. Yeah, I did On both. a tea kettle. On a tea kettle. So, because I not, would think that they're I'm like not British. Doing it justice. I'm not, they're He's not. a British kid. Some of them are, a lot of them aren't. And the thing is, is that, so I was like, okay, well, I, I know that there is a band that is like a pretty like hardcore metal band that uh, are mythical beasts. And I don't want to put them on blast. So I just know that there's a hardcore metal band that are mythical beasts. When you say put them on blast, what do you mean by that? Because I don't think you're using that right. I probably are. I'm probably not. I don't want to put you guys onto them. Yeah, I don't want to call is, them out. That is not what putting something on blast I don't blast want to call them out. Means. I don't want to draw attention to it. Okay. What does put on blast mean? I think that means that you're calling somebody out in a negative way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. yes. Well, which technically, I, by calling them out, I, it would be potentially negative for them. Okay. I don't want these two dads to be like, this band likes us. Yeah. Because I don't. Go over there and you know what I'm tell saying? them how much they suck. I just because they're because they have an image to maintain. They can't be outed. I love the fact that without saying who it is, now <laughs> there's probably a a whole bevy of these bands who think we're talking about them. I hope so. Well, that's that's encouraging. <laughs> so uh, I knew, and, and these dudes are like super hardcore and dress up in these ridiculous. Outfits and just, now don't use judgy terminology. I mean, they just look. They look. Try again. They look. They dress evil. up in what? In interesting outfits. Good. They look evil on purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play these guys for Shepherd. Oh. And so I played it. And uh, now these guys have, you know, success. They are successful. Okay. This is what they do for a living. They're still doing it. They have, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of monthly listeners, whatever. I don't know who you're talking about, by the way, but go ahead. And uh, he he, I, I play it, and he's like, he's kind of like listening and whatever. He's like, the wheels are turning. He can't like it. He's like, it's a little too clean. A little too clean. And what he meant by that was, they were too technically talented. good, too talented. It, which is a whole different. Which opened up a whole different avenue of conversation because I was like it sounds like punk though what he's describing you know it's like it is yeah. it's like it's more I would about say it's broadly punk it's more about the it's, energy and it's the, the ethos the than the execution it. it's the anti of it but yeah. I, it, you know because I was like oh you know I was with some friends recently when we were with our buddies in Colorado and we started listening we listened to so much music that weekend but we listened we went on a, like a little stint listening to like very technical metal which has never been something that we're into right but when they kind of explain it to us that ultimately metal is just nerds playing music. To be specific, it is musical nerds who are really, really technical, yeah. playing really, really technical music, time, time signature changes and all kinds of things that are just technically hard to do and hard to memorize and hard to keep up with. Yeah. And he, like, he, we kind of connected on that level but that's like the not cool form of the thing that he's into right now, which is the like, you gotta find the thing that nobody knows about that your group of friends will like, and then you gotta make sure that it doesn't really get outside of your group of friends, because then it's not cool anymore. Yeah, yeah. And- Yeah, you don't want your favorite band to get successful. It's that whole principle. Right. So no, it's not necessarily a new phenomenon, but the thing that's new for for me is that he's actively into something that I actively dislike. And like I said, I'm into that. Yeah, um, with I I never had that with my kids, with like Lily or I mean Lando is at a point where people are asking what kind of music you're into and he's, you know, he's 13, but he's like He's he's into a lot of things, but music is not like in the in the top ten of his list of things that he's passionate about. So it's, he doesn't have a quick answer for like I'm into this 
type of music. And then he's like, he started to feel bad about it. I'm like, oh, I, you know, maybe I can. You, you, I was like, but dude, you do, you do like a lot of music. You know a lot of music. Like all the music that we play in the house from all types of genres. Now they're all my genres, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of what you were saying. That he, he has this foundation of knowledge, but then he hasn't really turned the corner. And I, I told him I didn't really turn the corner in terms of like, what I really liked until, you know, around his age, or and also you went through a phase of not liking music, right? I mean, let's, let's, right. That's, that's a really the, important part my, of the history. Yeah, because my stepsister like, baby. like music. Like when you, you can be, I I think when you for your DJ thing, if you want to, ex, like there could be a moment during a set where there's like a little biography. You get Jenna to do it. Jenna reads it in her storytelling voice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, once upon a time, Elk Hound Snuggle Baby didn't even like music. Like, it, it, that, it's a great story. Oh, yeah, like, like a little immersive. Because his stepsister did. Biopic moment. And then you can take some liberties with the history you, if yeah. you, it depends on how badass you want to seem. And then he, uh, you don't want to say you killed your stepsister. You don't want to say anything like that because that's not you're, you're not trying to go for that image. But mm, you took yeah. her music from her, right? And now she doesn't like music, and you do. I, I, I don't. We got to yeah. work on the specifics of the story, but I'm just saying it's an option. Well, I mean, my mom divorced her dad. Yeah, that's the part we don't want. I, and then I, I took, don't want to bring that. And I took mu up. and I took music with me. Okay, well now divorce. you're talking like. We split things up. I got the music. And, the, and, I, and DJ Elkhound Snuggle Baby got right. the music. Right. He yeah. does not talk to her anymore because she doesn't have the music. I took the music. Yeah. There it is. I mean, Lily, I mean, the thing that I love is when my kids ask me for uh, to turn them on to something. Like, Lily started listening to Tribe Called Quest. Mm -hmm. And then she comes home from school and she's like, I, I'm just, I just been really loving the Tribe Called Quest. And like, I played some Beastie Boys for her and like, she liked that. And we're like taking her back to the airport. And I'm like playing a little bit more. And she's like, make me, make me a playlist. And I'm like, yes, yes. So I got to make her like a 90s rap, early 90s, which ended up being like a 90s East Coast like, I stayed in this, like, Tribe Called Quest perimeter, and, you know, you start to get into some, like, diggable planets, if you remember them, and, like, some mm. uh, other other bands like that. So I made her a playlist, and then two weeks later, Lincoln sends me a text, and he's like, a friend of mine invited me to, to go to the Freddie Gibbs show mm -hmm. down here around campus. And Freddie Gibbs is, like, this, one of my favorite rappers, um... Who I I found just in the past couple of years, but he has a number of like amazing albums and like, um, I was like, and he knew that I was really into Freddie Gibbs, but that he's not into that type of rap really, and so I was like, first of all, I was like, maybe I need to come down there and go to the show with you, but I didn't say that. I was like, I'll let you do your own thing, but I like made this playlist and like he listened to it, and then when we went down and visited him, he was like, I went to the show last night. You could have come down here a day earlier. You could have gone with me. I was like, well, I kind of felt like it needed to be, we it needed to be your thing. You don't want your dad there in this like small club where like everybody can see everybody, and I'm sitting there on the front row, but um. I gave him a primer on Freddie Gibbs to get him ready for the show. And he was like talking about which songs he liked. He's like, you know, I actually knew some of these. And then he like had a great time at the show. He told me all about it, he showed me the videos that he took. And then the next day we're walking around town and Lincoln goes, I just, I wasn't, he was walking with Christy and Lando and I heard it, he turned around and he said, Freddie Gibbs. And then I turned around and there he was walking down the street. And I like, I went right up to him and gave him some dap. I gave him some dap. But you didn't get a picture. I regret that I did not. I I feel like I could have got a lot of clout from a a selfie with Freddie Gibbs. Yeah. So Missed I'm kicking. I'm kicking myself. Uh, yeah, because I really would have liked that. Um, but um, I don't want to glamorize 
um, you know, dealing the powder. You know, that's a factor. You know, I don't want to endorse uh, any 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 of the cocaine game. Is that what he raps about? Yeah. So I got I got Bashley. He I raps got, about that. Yeah. What, what, well, yeah. You seem surprised. It's hip hop. I mean, come on. Okay. Get with the program. Okay. You know, am I going? Don't make me put you on blast. It's hard to rhyme with fentanyl. You yeah. Know, it's hard to rhyme with fentanyl. So yeah. It probably, See? probably doesn't include that. But uh. You know, maybe he's just playing a character. I don't know this guy's personal life. I just really like, I like his style. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think that I like his vocal style. So if, I'm a huge fan. If you have to choose, next time I'll do it. I'll get a selfie. If you have to choose one thing, uh, connecting with your kids over, <laughs> over something is definitely. I'm glad I have that. Like, if you have to choose yeah. one, you want that. You don't want the thing where you're disconnected. Right. It's just, I was I was kind of waiting, because I was like, you know, it was like, we something we had. Like, you, you, you've got the things where, like, oh, my parents' music means a lot to me. I still like all, Merle Haggard's my favorite artist of all time, and it's only because of my dad. Right, and the Lionel Richie obsession for me started with my yeah. mom. And, th and I think that, like, that's a beautiful thing. But then, yeah, we had those things that, like, w you know, at our house, we're constantly playing music. Got to have your own stuff. Right? And there is the music that we all agree on, and it spans a lot of genres. We play a lot of music. But then when Shepard starts playing his music in this little bubble now that he's found. Yeah. It's like, turn that off. Like, I, I like having the... Yeah, you got it. I don't want to listen to that yeah. dad moment because I feel like it's just this formative thing. You want to yeah. have the music that you're all listening right. to, but if like we had to play, th we were in the three eleven, and if if yeah. I had to been playing, th if you play in three eleven in your room, too loud, you need your dad to yeah. tell you to turn it off. Yeah, it's you need that moment. Yeah, you got to fight for your right to party, man. My mom threw away my best porno mag. Uh, yep, yep, right. See, I, you, there has to be some opposition. Porn, you know. They'll probably find that on their own as well, but that's not what I'm just that's quoting. Not, I'm just what I'm talking I'm about. I'm just quoting the Beastie Boys. That's all I'm doing. Um, that was the, that's you got to fight for your right to party. Right. Yeah. You can't show up at the party and your dad's there. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah, right. Lincoln likes a different form of hip hop than I do. Uh, Lily loves David Bowie. Mm, I like the cool. idea of David Bowie, but I'm not a fan of. I'm, I'm not. Once you sit down and listen music. to him, it's, yeah, it's it not, can be hard to. It's not for me. Fully right. Commit. He's not for me. Yeah. I have something. I'm, I'm kind of bred at heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have something. Just a quick thing to land us here. Okay. I know you don't like it when I ask you uh, numbers questions. But I'm not going to talk about how long you think a quickie is. Nothing sexual at all. Okay. I mean, we could probably find a way to make this sexual, as we always do. But um, we're human. What do you think? I want you to understand and want you to know that the world record for stacking watermelons on top of each other on top of each other was recently set. How many do you think it was? Well, first of all, how do you? Uh, we're Just talking no, nose to nose to tail. Or are we talking side to side, horizontal or vertical? A single stack of watermelons on top of each other. Well, yeah, but the are the watermelons, the watermelons oriented are, vertically? Yeah. Well, how else would you stack watermelons? Because because that's where the vine comes off and it creates a little bit of a base. And if you get enough of them that are like flat in that part, I just imagine yeah, you know okay. you can't stack them like this because they're, they're going to just roll off. It's just two convex yeah. surfaces on top of each other. Well, a lot of them grow in a patch, and there's a there's a there's a flatter side. And I'm not talking about those square. You know how you can force a watermelon to grow as a cube? Yeah, I'm talking about free grown watermelons. And then the I, I guess they have to be of a certain size to be to count. Um, like are they get like little pumpkin size? They're this big. Oh crap! They're like full big ones. Be, uh, one, two. I mean, three seems like it would be really tough. But if you if you have your pick of the litter, and this is a world, world record, record, world uh, record, seventeen, which sounds crazy to me. It sounds crazy. 
it sounds crazy. You were actually much closer when you said three. It's four. <laughs> it's, it's four. Really? Four? Yes. Uh, well, the door is wide open, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reason it's four is there's a guy in Iran. Uh, I, I, I'm going to try to say it. Rahala Dashmenziari. Okay. And he has, he has stacked melons. Four. He has stacked melons his entire life. Like, he's just kind of like, yeah, I stack melons. But he, he's never gotten past four? Well, the Guinness uh, requirements for melon stacking, they won't even begin to consider it until you get to four. If you want to stack melons for a world record, you got to get to four before they even pick up the phone. Okay. And so he just got to four and just they gave him the world record. Because three is not a stack. Three is a what? Well, three a, is a, a stack, but it's- A grouping? It's not a- vertical a, grouping? If, if you make three, first of all, I think the level of difficulty between three and four- Must be. Is a, like, these people, this is what they do. They get paid to, to, to record world records. They're like, yeah, stacking, it gotta be four. You gotta be, melons, four. But it, you know, it, it'll be 17 within a couple of years now. 17 is- Now that we put them on blast? 17, yeah. See, it, it makes sense to say it yeah, the way we're, that I was we're, we're blasting out like through a megaphone. I understand. Um, but I don't know. It just feels like I don't want to, I mean, this man's a melon four. stacker. He's a melon yeah. stacker. I don't want to take that from him. But I'm just letting you know, if you're a melon stacker, the record's four. It's there for the taking. It feels like somebody could get to five. We wouldn't do it. We, we're not those type of people. But if you want to swoop in and steal his record, I'm, th I'm thinking you're going to have to go more than five. I think you're going to have to go for at least 12. Well, if you go to five and make, get in and make a phone call, you'll get in the papers. In the papers. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You might get yeah. on Bananas. <laughs> okay, yeah, keep, you know? keep, keep pushing it. We'll definitely put that on Bananas. If you stack five melons, even if the Guinness people won't call you back, Bananas will put you on the front peel. <laughs> you want to be? You want bananas to be an alternative world record certification? I'm open to anything. We can undercut Guinness. I think it's whatever the most interesting thing is of the day is on bananas. And if somebody stacks five melons, that might be it. The world record for ban uh, banana stacking. Sorry. All right, you got a wreck for us? I do. Uh, this is another hot sauce wreck. This is uh, a hot sauce that you've all had. But I recently got some more of it. I have a lot of hot sauces at my house. I have determined that if you're going for the Louisiana style hot sauce. Put on fried chicken? That goes well on fried chicken. There's the best one. Mm -hmm. It's Crystal. Crystal. And, crystal and that's sauce. accessible, not with a K though. Nope, it's not the Little Burgers. It's right. Crystal with a C. And if you're in the mood, get extra hot. It's great. Huh. So I'm, I've am i been, as you know. Because I bought the one that has like a, I thought it had a, a form of a chicken on it. Some sort of, it said Louisiana hot sauce. And then when I got it home, I was like, this is not it. This is not. Well, yeah. And it wasn't The crystal. reason I was figuring out what it, what it should be is, as you know, I've got to, I've got to make my, my hot chicken sandwiches for something. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, uh. Like I usually just kind of use like for the hot sauce part is it's it's kind of an incidental ingredient in my hot chicken sandwiches because I make my own like sauce out of the hot oil and cayenne pepper. But uh, hot sauce is a part of it. And usually it's just like oh I've got some Texas Pete and listen I like Texas Pete, Winston Salem North Carolina. But Crystal's the one. But side by side, Crystal's the one. If you so you know if you like something, does it say Louisiana hot sauce on it? Yeah, it does. Okay, all right. It's that it's a specific flavor profile for hot sauce that Louisiana 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 style is crystal. Louisiana. And the thing that I uh, recommended that that like the South American more like getting into the habanero that Marie Sharps. I, I still I got to have that, but they don't go on the same things. You don't want to put Marie Sharps on a hot chicken sandwich because it's got some other stuff going on that sends it in a different direction. What do you think about the truffle hot sauce, truff? I have some. Um, I, I've really gotten into that. I lately. like it, but I have to be really careful about what I put it on because it's great on something like eggs because eggs yeah. are not a- Bland. They're not a dish that is trying to, there's not other things happening flavor-wise that you're yeah. trying to complement. Because once you put truffle on something, it becomes a truffle dish. Yeah. I went on a truffle kick, and uh, I'm coming out of it now. 
I've found my way out, but I do have two bottles now. I have the white bottle and the black bottle, which yeah. is unusual for me. Where do you keep it? Frigid? Frigid. Yeah. Apparently now we're supposed to fridge everything. Like we, I, I, I got upset a few weeks ago because Christy had pulled Lando into this like research on like where to keep your hot sauces. And then the answer was in the fridge. And I was just upset. It upset me. Yeah. It upset me because now we've got a big ass bottle of Valentina. Like Lando was searching for weeks for Valentina. That's his, that's his sauce. Mm -hmm. It's good sauce. It's that's hard, like a Mexican hard, hot It's sauce. hard to find. And it's mild. He likes it better than Tapatio. Uh, yeah. Better oh, than, yeah. Tapatio. I do not like Tapatio at all. It's, it's grainy. You like Cholula, though. Cholula, yes. But, but you it's, like Valentina better. Yeah. Big ass bottle. We got the Cholula. We've got the trough. All of it's now taking up all this space in the fridge. I'm like knocking over bottles of shit just to try to get to the milk. And, and I don't, I, and I don't buy it. I don't buy it. And then, who said this? And who then when, you put, the when you put the sauce on it, it's cold. I don't want my sauce to be refrigerator cold either. Right. Do you? No. No, you want it to be room temperature. I you don't want the, cold hot sauce. When the first ingredient in something is vinegar or peppers, don't put I'm not it in the fridge. It. I mean, why do I have to? I mean, I could put like, I could put like little creatures in there. I could preserve things in there. It could be. It's like formaldehyde. <laughs> I don't know. No, it did. You want to search it? You want people to argue? You know what? Let us know. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. Yeah, let us know if we're crazy. Because I, I, I'm i feeling like I'm going to go home and put my foot down. And usually when that happens, it, nothing happens. It's like... Yeah, you got to figure it. Put something else My there. foot was higher and then it got lower. That's your, really the only observable difference in me putting down. my foot down. Put all your feet and all your hands down. Get on all fours and then say something as a dad. But so... Uh, are, you or are you with me? Are you into the house? Are you with us? Or are you against us? One eight 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 earpod one. Thanks for hanging out long enough to get that. And you know what? I I understand. I understand it's frustrating. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna get better at when you move on to the next thing. I I I am making it. I will make a concerted effort. You don't have to. to not I not, move we've on. been we've been through this before. No, no. I'm saying you don't have to not. You don't have to move on if I move on. It's just wait till I stop talking I to bring us back. I understand. I understand. It's it's the dynamic we talked about before, and I think it's you know because we're moving through more things on the show. I think it's uh, I think it's coming back. It's coming back to roost. So it's getting reacquainted with it. So I just want to be on record and say I feel I, you, I feel you. I feel you. I, appreciate I understand that. the frustration. I'm not doing it on purpose, but I will purposely do it less on not purpose. Okay. And if you have any more thoughts about it, you can call me at 1 888 EarPod 1. Okay. Hi. My name's Cole. I am from Detroit, Michigan, and I just I just listened to the uh, episode from this week, The Thoughts on Unruly Kids and Restaurants. And I just want to say that I fully support Link's opinion about the tablets. I mean, granted, I'm 22 and I haven't had kids, so I can't really say anything about it. But um, I don't know about those tablets. You know, as a person that grew up with a lot of technology, I don't know about those tablets. I think they're stunting some social things. Okay, that's pretty much it. All right, love you guys. Appreciate you. Um, have fun. Be safe, I guess. Uh, <laughs> To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.